Police say Hania was starting up her aunt's car so that they could drive to the bus stop. That's when police say the suspect pushed Hania into the car and drove off. Police and the FBI say this investigation is far from over. They are vowing to track down Hania's kidnapper and bring that person to justice. And we're seeing about seven and a half inches of rain throughout the area. And right here, I'm standing in a few inches of water, and we're seeing the first stages of flooding. It is such a tragedy. Deputy Turner died tonight at McLeod. She had been in the ICU since the October 3rd shooting, and members of her family tell me she sustained gunshot wounds to the torso and to the leg. Governor McMaster said, while it's unfortunate that the situation happened, he said it's not surprising given the dangerous nature of inmates in maximum security prisons. She says when they returned home and saw this, they were absolutely devastated. If your grass is taller than 18 inches, you will receive a notice from the city as well as a bill for cleanup cost. But if a new ordinance at City Council passes, you will receive both of those plus a $500 fine. A record number of absentee ballots were sent out. We're talking 8,000 ballots. The city tore down trees in this vacant lot to make room for six new single family houses. Now they're also focusing on building features that will bring people together and also make certain places a little bit more accessible. I got a front row seat of their rehearsal today and to me sounds like they're ready. Let's go in and check it out. I spoke with one man who says he has faith that the federal government will do what they can to make sure the money gets here to South Lumberton, but he says he feels South Lumberton was forgotten in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew and he doesn't want that to happen again. It's been a devastating time over here on this street for the community, uh, for this side of town in South Lumberton. Residents on Front Street have been here before, picking up the pieces after floodwaters ravaged their neighborhood. Marcel Jackson says his aunt's home was one of many houses threatened by rising water in Hurricane Matthew and again in Hurricane Florence. Yeah, all of this is actually flooded. Um, right here, you can see where some power company drove through our yard. And uh, you can see how wet the ground is. And also, you can also see uh, during Matthew, that's where the water actually came up on the brick right there. Okay, that's mm -hmm. what I saw. Yeah. So that's, yep. that's a few feet of water. Right? Yes, yes. Probably looks like about two or three feet. Or yeah. Yeah. Jackson says the impacts of two major hurricanes in two years are taking a toll on the community, especially financially. But the south side of Lumpton has not received what they what's owed to them. They have not received the, the, the benefits, the funds. We have not received the support that we need on South Lumberton. I will say that and I stand on that. As they continue waiting for federal relief funds, Governor Roy Cooper is vowing to expedite the process. We have a lot of people who were hurt twice, and we've asked the federal government for flexibility in our efforts to make sure that everybody is covered. Jackson says he believes the governor, but ultimately he puts his faith in a higher power. I put my trust in God, and I, and I trust him for all things. I say it's a blessed by God community. Uh, you have some real people here who believe in prayer. He also says some of the roads here are so badly flooded, he and some of his neighbors haven't been able to make it to work, which has taken a financial toll on the community. But he says they're all rallying together to support one another. Reporting in Lumberton, Aaron Brown for News 13. Well, as you can imagine, it has just been such an emotional day for Hanya's family. They say they're devastated and they're just asking that her kidnapper bring her home safely. Thirteen-year-old Hanya Aguilar's family just wants her home. She said that she, the, the family feels devastated right now and that they hope that whoever took her away can return her safe and sound because she's a good girl and the family right now is, is super devastated. They're begging her kidnapper to bring her back after snatching her from her aunt's front yard this morning. Police say the suspect, a man wearing all black and a yellow bandana around his mouth, forced Hanya into her aunt's car as she was heating it up before school. And forced her into a green 2002 Ford Expedition. And he then stole the vehicle and drove away with Miss Angler in the vehicle. Lumberton Police Chief Michael McNeil says this is a multi-agency investigation. The Lumberton Police Department has requested the assistance of the Federal Bureau of Investigation 
the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation, as well as the Robinson County Sheriff Department to help us with this investigation. Authorities say they're interviewing several witnesses, hoping to track down the suspect and bring Hanya back home safely. And as of right now, police do not have a suspect description, but if you see Hanya or the vehicle, you are urged to call 911 immediately. You can also call Lumberton Police at 910-671-3845. Reporting in Lumberton, Aaron Brown for News 13. News 13's Aaron Brown was there as each received eSight glasses. It's a new breakthrough technology that helps restore vision. The world looks completely different today than it did yesterday for Miracle, Kyland, Artie, Cole, and Lizzie. All five of them received their very own pair of eSight glasses, breakthrough technology that restores sight to people who are blind or visually impaired. For some of them, like seven year old Miracle, they were born without sight. She has ocular albinism, and so she's been wearing glasses since she was three months old. For others, they lost their ability to see over time. You go to bed with, you know, ve you know, very good vision, and you wake up the next morning and you're just about blind completely. But today they saw things and people they haven't seen in years or ever before, including their own parents. As they adjust to life with eSight, they're looking forward to doing things like reading their favorite books. Goosebumps. Diary of the Whippy Kid, Smile Sisters, or watching TV without any interruptions or complications. Enjoying football games, basketball games, without having to ask who has the ball, you know, was that a, t a catch or a touchdown. And they hope other people can experience this life changing moment with the help of eSight. I hope that they're able to, other kids are able to find out about these devices um, and hopefully be able to get them too because I feel like every child deserves this opportunity. Reporting in Lumberton, Aaron Brown for News 13.